as a computer scientist, creating entity relationship diagrams is a vital skill if you're going to be working with databases. So what is an entity relationship diagram? We need to start off by looking at what an entity is. So an entity is literally an object about which we can store data. And those will normally end up on our system as tables in a database. So an entity relationship diagram is going to show what the entities are. And just as with most things in computer science, it does what it says on the tin and the relationships between those. So there can either be no relationship, one to many, many to one, or many to many. Although we're not going to be looking at the many to many relationships. Each entity will have various attributes. So that's categories of information about that entity. So you, for example, for teachers here, you can see that there's a teacher ID, which in a lot of schools is initials, three initials, and their first name and their last name. So the steps that we need to go through to actually create an ERD, the biggest problem really is being able to identify the entities. So one of the nice ways of doing this is to try and summarize the system or the data within the system in a single sentence. And that often enables you to just pick out the entities directly. And once you've done that, it's relatively simple to identify the attributes for those entities. And then finally, I can show you a method for creating the relationships between the entities by asking two simple questions. So let's look at a couple of examples here. A library system. Well, a library lends books to people. So that would give us three entities, loans, books, and people. A fantasy football league would have teams of players. It would record regular results from live matches and players could be traded in order to, to, to achieve the most points you know, in the league or in the season. And so when we look at this sentence, we can see we've got teams, players, results, trades, and possibly matches, depending on exactly what we want to do within our system. So once you've got the entities, and you're better off having more rather than less, because you can always cross them off if you decide that's not a useful entity to store data about or to represent. For example, matches, well, that information's probably going to be stored in results. So that's why maybe we don't need matches as an entity in that example. Here we go. We've got the simple library system that we just talked about. And the three entities from that were loans, members, and books. And now I've gone into each of those entities and identified the attributes for that entity. Now, this list is not exhaustive. It's just a matter of what you want to store on your system. So for example, for members, you may well want to store the member address as well. And you might want to do that in several fields. You might want, uh, you know, street address, town, postcode, etc., etc. This is the primary key. So as it says at the bottom here, primary key is a unique identifier for record on a table. So that means every member will have a different member ID. And we go over to the loans table. We've got loan ID as a primary key. We've got loan member ID. So that's just the member that is taking out that loan. Loan book ID, well, that's just the book that's taking out that loan. So these are both foreign keys because they're primary keys from another table. And then we've got the date borrowed, the date due back, and the date returned, which can be null if the book's not been returned. And finally, we've got the books entity, book ID, because the book, the library might have several copies of the same book. Therefore, they would all have the same ISBN. So the library needs a way of uniquely identifying each book. And then just the standard information about the book. Again, you may wish to add more information onto this. Finally, creating the relationships between the entities. So as already discussed, there are four types of relationship, none, one to many, many to one, and many to many. Just ask two simple questions. So if we take two 
entities here, we're going to take loans and members. How many members per loan? Well, the answer is one. So we have one on the member end because member was first in our question. And we ask the opposite question, how many loans per member? And the answer is many. So we put this crow's foot on the loans end because that's the many end. Loans was first in that question. And then you continue to ask the question between each of the entities on the system. And if any of the answers is none, of course, you draw no line. And if both answers are many, you could draw a line with two crow's feet on, but you're better off not drawing that line onto your diagram as it tends to be confusing. Thank you ever so much for uh, watching this video and tuning in today.